Hi friends! Today I wanted to read you a really cool story about a scientist. Her name is Mary Anning and she was one of the very first people to ever find dinosaur bones. Fossils. This book is called Dinosaur Lady and it is about Mary Anning, the very first paleontologist. This book was written by Linda Skears. I'm excited to read it with you. Mary Anning dodged high tides and crashing waves to scour the beach near her home in England. She filled her basket with curiosities that she would sell to tourists. Those are people on vacation. Things like seashells and fossils with fanciful local names like snake stones and devil toenails and angel wings. She scrambled over the crumbling cliffs and rocky peaks while avoiding landslides. Despite the constant danger, Mary wasn't afraid. She was determined to uncover the area's long buried secrets, no matter the risk. Do you see some cool things that Mary might like to put in her basket? There's some neat shells around here. Mary learned to read and write at Sunday school, but she wanted to learn more. She had so many questions about the bones and fossils that she found, and she needed answers. So she borrowed books and she copied scientific papers. She would sketch or draw intricate drawings of her discoveries, and she took notes, lots and lots of notes. That's something all scientists do. One morning when Mary and her brother were exploring the cliffs, they saw something surprising. Nestled in a rock was a large eye socket looking right back at them. Do you see that rock that looks like an eyeball? That's very interesting. Carefully, they chiseled away the dirt and stone and they found a four foot long head with a pointed snout massive jaw, hundreds of teeth. It was frightening, but Mary wasn't scared. She was fascinated. They coaxed workers from the village to help them dig it out and carry it home. Whoa! While the men returned to their work, Mary set out to find the rest of this creature's body. The cliffs were constantly shifting and sliding, but she thought it had to be buried nearby. But where? Day after day, Mary climbed over the cliffs. Week after week, she searched. Month after month. She is not giving up. After almost a year, Mother Nature lent Mary a helping hand. The rain had been pounding from a devastating storm and it had caused a few landslides. It's when the dirt and mud kind of come down like a mountain, it runs down a landslide. In just one night, the cliff's old ancient layers were exposed. Layers that would have taken Mary years to uncover with her hammer and chisel. And something caught Mary's eye. What do you see in that cliff? bones. Mary is excited. Hmm, boldly, Mary chipped away. She uncovered ribs, vertebrae, that's like a backbone, flippers. Was it a crocodile? A fish? A lizard? No. Mary had discovered a creature that had never been seen before. Was she scared? Nope, not at all. But many villagers were scared. Soon they were all talking about Mary's monster. Word traveled to a rich collector who had been looking to buy an interesting skeleton. Mary didn't want it to go, but the money would help her family for several months. So the collector bought the skeleton and donated it to a museum in London. 
and scientists and geologists all went to see it at the museum. A geologist is someone who studies rocks. They were very interested in this fossil. They studied it. They calculated it. They debated. That means they were arguing about it. They named it Ichthyosaurus, which meant fish lizard. The word dinosaur hadn't even been invented yet. They didn't even know the word dinosaur, so they called it a fish lizard. They made an announcement that shocked the world. Mary's skeleton wasn't just old. It was millions of years old. This declaration shattered the belief that the earth was not very old. Also, no one had realized that an entire species, a group of animals, could become extinct until they were studying a skeleton of a creature that was not on the earth anymore. Wow, so many interesting things that they learned. While others dismissed her discovery, Mary kept exploring and learning. Look at these skeletons that Mary is finding. Very interesting. Over the years, Mary also found many odd, dark, lumpy skeletons or pebbles inside of the skeletons. She would take notes and study them. She would reread her notes and make drawings. Mary figured out what they were. Except it was something that a fancy lady shouldn't talk about. But Mary was more of a scientist than a fancy lady. So she told everyone that these stones called bezoars were actually fossilized poop. The geologists sneered. Scientists scoffed. Then they took a closer look and they realized she was right. Mary had discovered something new and this discovery helped the scholars to learn more about these ancient creatures. Did you know that poop could be a fossil? Mary also found many long, thin, cone-shaped fossils. They were unremarkable, ordinary, at least on the outside. She cut one open. Tucked inside was a little pocket filled with a thick, dark substance. Mary was even more curious now. Adding a few drops of water turned this substance into ink. What? Mary's discovery proved that ancient, old creatures in the water squirted ink to hide themselves from hungry predators. Wow, she's doing lots of experiments with the fossils. When Mary was 24, she made another discovery. Look at this fossil. This creature didn't have legs or flippers. It had wings. Wings, what? Mary had unearthed a prehistoric flying reptile called a pterosaur. Around the whole world, Scientists were all talking about Mary's incredible discoveries, but they weren't talking about Mary, not at first. Even though Mary could identify a species from one single bone, and she could rebuild a whole skeleton like a puzzle, she wasn't allowed to join the Geological Society of London. It's like a club for scientists. Back then, women were not allowed in the club. Does that seem fair? I don't think so. She couldn't go to classes. 
She couldn't teach. She couldn't attend lectures to listen to other scientists. They said, no, no girls allowed. I think that's pretty rude. But Mary knew that her discoveries were important and they might change the way that scientists view the Earth's past. And so did many other geologists, scientists, scholars. Because where do you think they went when they had questions? Straight to Mary's cottage. They were eager to learn more and they would follow her over cliffs, even if it terrified them. And it did. Look at that. They're following Mary so they can learn about fossils from her. Just like long buried fossils, Mary's achievements have slowly been uncovered and shared with the world. Her daring discoveries help to form paleontology. This is the kind of science that uses rocks and parts of the earth to study fossils and prehistoric life. And she did all of that with a homemade hammer, a chisel, and a never ending quest to fearlessly keep exploring and learning. I love this story. Mary Anning was so, so, so important to help us learn about fossils and dinosaurs. Anytime you learn something new about dinosaurs, you can say, thank you, Mary Anning, because she was a really important scientist that helped us all to learn more. I want to learn more about scientists and dinosaurs, too. I'm going to keep reading books about it. If you'd like to read more books about it with me, you can hit the subscribe button below and we'll read together. I also have a virtual preschool where we learn lots of new things. There's a link below for that too, so we can learn together. I hope I see you again soon. Keep reading.